this is uh, Eugene Driscoll, Jody Mosier of the Valley Independent Sentinel. Welcome to our eighth episode, I guess, of Naval Gazing, the uh, self-absorbed Valley Indie podcast. And we, we were just talking uh, right now about, well, hopefully now you can hear me. I don't know. We just pressed the button. Uh, we're trying to get, Jody might go on WICC tomorrow. Uh, we're thinking like five o'clock to talk about stuff, but she's worried she's gonna curse, which is a weird thing. Like to yeah. just start reflect, you just automatically start cough. Cur- I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. Look at that! I can. I'm nervous. I'll I'll uh, mess up and then I'll say like a swear and it's the radio. Like here we could erase it or you know whatever. It's the internet. We could put it on. Mm-hmm. On the radio, I feel like we'll. They like- got the dump button, man. I watched uh, <laughs> private parts, the Howard Stern movie. We have nothing to worry about. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about this week was. Uh, on Friday, that storm in Seymour was unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, you know, I'm from New York, so it's not like we have uh, tropical storms once a week. Uh, the only thing I can compare it to was in 1999, there was a tropical storm, Floyd, that passed through uh, New York and did a lot of damage like that. But, uh, I mean, and Jody was the one who was on the scene. I was at home. What happened, just to... Uh, clue readers in you know we worked till whatever five o'clock that day on friday for me that my day had begun i was at an ansonia fire at 6 30 in the morning so i was i was you beat done, yeah. i was beat i was home taking care of i was mr mom by 5 15 taking care of my son and i looked outside and saw uh actually i looked out the window of, uh, above my door my front door it's a little small window and it was gray outside but i could see that it was raining and the rain was falling so heavy that it appeared gray I said, well, that, that's interesting, and I turned on uh, the scanner, and at that moment, it was like 15 minutes into it, but all hell had broken loose in Seymour, and the amount of calls that the fire department had uh, all over the place, you know, it was just unreal. And so I was hoping it would be over quickly. I started posting some things on Facebook, because we're done. I mean, we have no staff at this point. And Tony was on vacation. Yeah, Tony was away. Uh, we posted a, a link to, to, to a police scanner so people could listen, but it became, you know, apparent pretty quickly that this was something that hasn't been, uh, you know, hasn't happened in the two years we've been reporting from the Valley. So then I sent an email, I think, to you, mm-hmm. which is my passive-aggressive way of letting Jody, you know, I really wanted her to drive up there, <laughs> even though she'd already worked 19 hours. Well, you say, so if, you do you're it not, through email. if you're not swamped, and I'm thinking, okay, it's Friday night, what would I be swamped with? And I think you were like, you had told like me earlier, you were like, I'm going to go out to dinner to Antonio's tonight, and I was like, oh. Yeah. The reason I couldn't, I mean, I would have went myself, but I had my, my child. And I was I thinking, gonna, yeah, I'm thinking, okay, I'll go, and this will take an hour, you know, it's, I live 10 minutes away from Seymour. But instead, what happened, because everyone, because of the flooding and everything, I'm sitting in traffic for an hour. I was sitting in my car. Yeah, where'd you get stuck? I took, um, I knew Route 8 was shut down, so I said, I'll take back roads. So I came through downtown Ansonia, and by the time I got past the armory, uh, right there in Ansonia on Route 115, headed north, it was already traffic. It was going slow at that point. So... I got maybe a mile past there, and it was just a parking lot at that point. Hmm. Like, I didn't even get out of Ansonia before I was in a stop position. It took, you know, my wife was commuting home from Bridgeport at roughly the same time. And she was home, Bridgeport to Derby, faster than it took you to get from Shelton to to Seymour. So, I mean, people were, I mean, everyone was turning around, and I'm saying, all right, if it's flooding on Route 8, this must be people coming trying to get off Route 8. Then I found out later some of the the downtown roads were closed because of flooding, and that was, it was a mess everywhere. The frustrating thing for me was my cell phone wasn't working. Me too. So. Not that, no, it was frustrating. For you, that my cell phone. Because you were the eyes and ears. Yeah, and I was just looking at the back of a truck. And I was trying to change my son's diaper. It was just, (laughs) it was a mess. I was having a heart attack. It's just like, you know, you're, you're a multimedia reporter, whatever, in air quotes, and you can't send a photo to your editor from the scene. You can't send a video. I can't tweet. I can't do any Facebook updates. I think I... Posted something on Facebook, and then an hour later it went up. Like, yep. I drove through some zone, and all of a sudden it was up. Yeah, I got all your pictures roughly an hour after you sent them. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm like, what good am I? I can't. I it's had to go back to the yeah. old thing of calling in descriptions. And I was just like, this is so, you know, this is okay. You can post stuff for me, but I'd rather put the video in the picture because I'm used to just, you know, immediately telling people in photos what's happening. So. And then we found out only uh, last night that... Two cell towers 
stopped working. I don't know exactly what their problems were, but two cell towers, one in Beacon Falls and one in uh, Nolan Field, uh, were disabled. So it wasn't just, you know, as we're seeing on Facebook, mm -hmm. that the whole town was like, oh, I thought it was just me. Yeah. And one thing that was great as, you know, I didn't know what was going on with you. Uh, I just knew I wasn't getting any photos from you, and I was like, ah, damn Jody's phone, and not realizing that it was <laughs> yeah, I'm my beyond phone, our I control. Phone. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, Jody just did, you know, if she didn't want to work, she just should have said so. But <laughs> on Facebook, we got, and this is the, the thing I love about being an online site, and being local like we are, mm -hmm. our readers in Seymour, were or stuck on traffic uh, on Route 8, were telling us what was going on. Yeah. And that's what, you know, it's a community service news, you know, we, uh, that, that's what we're there for. Uh, you know, to, that, and that Facebook page, I was just really proud of the fact that that was a place where Valley residents could go to kind of trade information and see what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was cool. And we also, you know, we were, I was on Twitter as well, uh, gathering information from other media that were maybe getting tweets out, and we were sharing that info. You know, we linked to a Valley Gazette story. They had something up before we did. Uh so in all, it was just the way, you know, the public and us working together. And that's the, I think that's what new media is. You know, it's not just where you, uh, you know, you're this omniscient, invisible reporter throwing information out to people and then not acknowledging, you know, what, what, what other uh, media is doing. Yeah. You know, it's really just a, we're just a, a conduit to, to get information to people. And, and, and the firefighters and the public works department and the police department, the ambulance corps, I mean, what an incredible job. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm supposed to be unbiased and all that, but listening to those, I mean, it was scary. It was, it was, I was, you know, not scared, but it, there was a feeling of apprehension listening to them because you could hear in their voices that this was something that was unexpected and they weren't, they were dealing with it, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, entire yeah. roads were washed Just, out. And, and it's amazing to me that... No one was I mean, hurt. Yeah, what if it's like a 10-year-old you know, kid walking mm -hmm. on, the, on the side of one of those roads? Or a car. If a car had been parked there, it, or done. driving. If you were yeah. driving on that road, if you happened to be... I mean, that was I'm incredible. amazed no one got hurt. It was incredible. And the way it was handled, you know, hats off to those guys, all of the volunteers and, and the paid employees. And it's just, you know, like I said, my day, at the beginning of this, I said my day began at 6.30. I was at a, a fire at Ansonia, which... Uh, at a garage, auto repair shop, turned out to be arson. Uh, and the amount of firefighters that were there, I'm just, you know, I, when, by the time I got there, I got there within 20 minutes after hearing it, it was happening, and it was done, and the guys were packing up, so hats off to them. Uh, and to that end, it brings us to a story we, we published this morning where we had one reader, and I don't know who it was, was saying, kept questioning, why wasn't Code Red used? Why wasn't Code Red used in Seymour? And, uh, you know, after any big event like this, after structure fires, any type of, of unusual event, they always do a review. And uh, that was our story uh, this morning. You know, Tony, the reporter, was, was worried that asking questions, why didn't they use Code Red, w w would piss off a uh, fire department or whoever. But, you know, it's not Monday morning quarterbacking. It's just, it's just to ask that question. And I think it's a legitimate question because... I got the sense that people wanted information and they were coming to the Valley Indy Facebook page. You know, our traffic was, I think the best, was incredible. It was a top four story of all time that we've right, had. It just, right, it just right to the top, yeah. which just tells me people were... They were searching they, Yeah, for they were searching for yeah. information. Our, our, you know, our, our Google uh, stuff that I looked at the next morning, people were searching see more flood, see more flood, see oh, more yeah. flood, and that was getting us traffic. And I think they were coming back to the story to see. To see what was going on. Yeah, and, and we got later later in the day, you know, people on Facebook saying, yeah, you know, this was useful. Mm -hmm. So I guess that demonstrates that there was a need there and that a code red message sometime that night probably would have been uh, helpful to people. Uh, you know, but, I mean, the, the people were, they were overwhelmed, I think, for, for at yeah. least two hours there. So, But they're doing that review, and I'm sure that'll be something they'll take into consideration. And we're rapidly running out of time. And, of course, you know, there's what we, what we want to say, what we should have said, and what we actually said. So take that for what it's worth, and see you later.